The barn quilts trail really captured my imagination. Um, my friend Jean lives here where we're standing and this is her barn quilt. And about just about a little over a year ago, I was ride, I like to ride my bike and I ride all over the valley. And I rode past Jean's house and I didn't know anything about the barn quilts or what it was or anything. And I saw this on her barn and I was, you know, I was so taken by it. I, so I called her immediately and I told her how much I liked it. And she said, well, do you want to help paint them? And so I went to the studio and that was the start. I was hooked. As an early barn quilt owner, um, I was also unemployed and looking for something to volunteer for and be a part of. And um, I'm creative and I love anything uh, involving paint or anything like that. And I think the other painters also enjoy it because it's, it's kind of a social thing. It's, there's about four of us that are always there. We just show up like it's a job, you know, like twice a week. And, and it, if it takes five hours a day, that's fine. But, um, but we've gotten really close. So we've been hanging barn quilts on really old barns like this one that's over 100 years old. But we've also hung them on new barns and uh, old barns that have been turned into party rooms and old barns that have been turned into homes. And even buildings that aren't barns at all, like the Kittitas County Historical Museum. Okay, this started in Southern Ohio with a woman called Donna Sue Groves and her mother. Her mother was a quilter, very well known in the area, and they owned a little farm with a tobacco barn on it, and just right on the edge of the Appalachian Mountains, a very rural area. And her mother wanted a painted quilt block put on the barn. So Donna Sue Groves, who was pretty artistic, said she'd make it for her. And so she painted it, hung it on the barn, and then the neighbors wanted one. So Donna Sue helped them paint one for their barn. And then another neighbor wanted one. And so by the end of that first year, she had 20 neighbors on this little windy rural road in Southern Ohio with quilt blocks. Eventually, within a couple years, there were like five counties all around her that had barn quilt trails. And it snowballed into this what they call the American Barn Quilt Trail movement. From that very first year of 20 barn quilts, it has now spread to over 5,000 barn quilts across the country. So in 2012, um, my husband and I thought this would be something that would really work well in Kittitas County. I had seen an image of a barn quilt on a barn in Iowa on the internet and you know, researched it and found out it's not just about painted quilt blocks on barns, but it's about the heritage of the farming community. It's about the story of how that family homesteaded that area, um, how the barn is built, all the things the barn has witnessed. I mean, on the East Coast, these barns have witnessed some of them the Civil War. That's how old they are. We came on board. We were the 34th state to get a barn quilt trail. And at that time, there were 4,000 barn quilts up across the country. And this is considered the largest grassroots art project in our nation's history. My name is Mary Pittis, and my husband Doug and I own the Iron Horse Inn Bed and Breakfast here in South Cleelum. And we're also part of the South Cleelum Rail Yard National Historic District, which was all of the Milwaukee Railroad properties here in South Cleelum. It makes me proud that we have this historic property that's being recognized and represented on the on the barn quilt trail. Uh, it means a lot that the the quilt block itself is called Railroad Crossing because this is so appropriate for this National Historic District uh, connected with the South Cleelum Rail Yard uh, that was the Milwaukee Railroad. My name is Katie Daly Kladnick, and I was born and raised on this farm. Um, my parents came from Italy, and they purchased this farm in 1922. 
and their name was Frank and Regina Dolly. They eventually started a small dairy and we had a grocery store. My mom raised chickens and we sold eggs. And we just grew up here. It was a nice place to grow up. And you know, there were seven of us in our family, so <laughs> we had a, you know, we had a crowd. My niece, Debbie Odaga, who passed away in December of December 8th, talked about putting up a barn quilt. And when she passed away, then we, the family, the cousins, and my sister and I decided to put up this barn quilt. And we put, uh, put the barn quilt has the cows because of the dairy. There are sheep and grapes uh, for my niece Debbie and her husband. And of course the Italian colors. So this is in memory of my parents, Debbie and Mike. My folks used to make wine. I, I'm not a wine drinker though. <laughs> no, no, I never liked it. <laughs> The stream of quilting that came to the U.S. came from England and Wales, and that came, of course, across with the with the first settlers. In. I see this quilt as a connection to another woman in the past, and I I I feel like that it's a continuation of that woman. She may be gone now, but I can touch and I can see I can see what she was thinking about. The symbolism on the quilt is almost like a message. It's that connection to the woman in the past, to the people of the past, to how they lived, and not not to not to big history, big history, but to everyday history. Barn quilts were really important for us because we wanted the message to be about agritourism agricultural and families and then the barns were just a way that we could place some beautiful display blocks uh, for people to see from the roads. We wanted people to celebrate what the families had brought to the land for many years. So Jackie Fawcett and Gary Fawcett came to the Chamber of Commerce. We had a tourism meeting. It was probably about three years ago, three to four years ago, and she came up with this plan to put um, display blocks on agricultural barns. At first it wasn't received very well, but um, the tourism committee decided to take the leap of faith and we were able to give them some financing to start. Yeah. Debbie wanted sheep, and so we just kind of incorporated everything together. So, when you look at it, it really looks pretty with the grapes and you don't see it as good from far away, you know, like the grapes, but looking at, at it from here, it's, it is pretty. And it's special. It's special to us and to the family. <laughs>